So hi everyone, welcome back to our class or welcome back to our coffee classes. So basically in today's video, we are going to look at something very special, something that anyone can create at their households or inside their homes. So basically the coffee or the, uh, the basic coffee that we are going to look for, it's for everyone to create when you're at, home, uh, when you're at your home uh, without waiting for the barista or without going to the coffee shop. But all you need to is to have the right apparatuses and the right vessels towards this coffee. So basically in today's video, we are going to look at the plunger. What is a plunger? What is a French press? You get it. So basically this is the plunger. Before we get to anything like, uh, before we get to looking at the plunger, the first thing as we get to commence with our study today, I have to first pre-wet this vessel. I'll tell you the reason as to why I have to first provide this vessel, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour hot water inside this vessel. Then we can easily commence with our what? We can easily commence with our lecture. Remember any kind of craft brew that is being brewed, any vessel that we use, we have to first Provide our vessel so that we can easily burn out all those chemicals, all those uh, uh, internal factors that are really going to affect our coffee. So basically, this is the plunger. When we look at the craft brews, recently in the previous studies or in the previous vessels or in the previous craft brews that we have been looking at, we've looked at the chemics, we have looked at the uh, Kalita. Now today we are looking at this plunger. When we look at the other products or when we look at the other craft brews that we've been studying, they have a permanent category or a process through which they are brewed. But this one is special. The other part or the other previous craft brews, we basically use the we basically use the power over process whereby they use the gravitational force. The water carries the coffee then it the water carries the coffee up then it takes it low down to the bed and the water passes through the filter or the coffee, the liquor that we are trying to look for passes through the what? The filter for a given period of time and a given number of pours as a barista within the different recipe that you are using. So in today's vessel, it's really going to be different whereby the practice that we are going to try to use is called the immersion process. The immersion process basically is where we get to soak a given item or a given substance to create or to quench out or to remove, to extract that liquor. Then the, that liquor that we are looking for, it's like you're getting a bag of tea. Every time you get a bag of tea, you want to take a cup of tea, you're going to first put sugar, you're going to get the hot water, pour it in the vessel. But the moment you put in that bag of tea, you are going to give it uh, like one minute, two minutes or three minutes to remove or to extract out that liquor from the tea that you want to make that hot water a very perfect a very perfect tea. That's so that's what we are going to be looking at today. So what defines this plunger or the French press? Like you hear the French press, I think it was uh, innovated right away from the French people who really liked a given medium, uh, let me say a strong coffee that would eliminate of their not only their sleep but their anxiety after bedtimes. <laughs> That's why we are also these days trying to enjoy this kind of coffee. And this is one of the special coffees any barista will have to drink immediately they arrive at their stations. But with the people at homes or when you can easily access uh, this vessel, trust me, you make it at your sofa at home. You just get your hold of your cup then get out in the get out of the house with that liquor or the plunged coffee like i told you it uses the immersion process so as we get to start what are the items that we need to make or to create this kind of liquor when it comes to coffees we need still our manual grinder i believe most of my videos you've seen me using the manual grinder because the freshness that it arises it it, it arises from the coffee it gets me the right perfect taste, the right perfect flavors, and the aromas, not forgetting the fragrances that I really need. So due to the freshness of due to the freshness that I need out of the coffee, I get to find myself 
using this manual grinder and by the fact i like exercising my what my 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 wrist or my knuckles or getting some energy within me or just in case i've just woken up then we need our coffee beans here we need the weighing scale it's a must for you to have the perfect right liquor you must have a weighing scale remember this weighing scale it's a big towing scale whereby it has a section of the timing and the grammage so once you use this weighing scale, it's going to give you the accurate timing. Let me say, we are going to plunge our coffee for five, four to five minutes. Yeah, four to five minutes. What is the exact time? Most of us are really going to get too much gadgets from our pockets like this phone. Remember, this phone goes to the toilet. Sometimes it has those external factors that are going to affect your coffee. But this is stationed in one place, though we have to clean it for basic hygiene purposes, but it's stationed in one place. So this is the weighing scale, the digital weighing scale, and the main vessel is the plunger. When we look at this plunger, it is created in a form that it can be served as it is. Let me say we have already brewed or extracted our coffee or immersioned our coffee right here. I can easily serve it to the customer right like this, and the customer will get to pour it by him or herself due to the fact that it has the right presentation when it comes to coffee serving. You just give them the right vessel, the cup where they're going to enjoy their coffees and kick off with another start of different items that you want to do while at station. So we are going to look at this. We are going to look at the recipe. What is the recipe? The recipe is defined by the, the right amount over uh, the coffee, over the water that you're going to use, the timing, how many grams are you going to use of the coffee, how many mils of water are you going to use, through how many minutes or how many seconds are you going to brew this coffee. Does it need, does it need filtration after or it's going to be just served right away? So when we look at this plunger, it has this glass vessel. Right now it's still hot, but I think I'll get to show you. So it has this, uh, the press node, like you see it. Within this press node, it has a filter right here. You can easily open this filter uh, for, for cleaning purposes, but right now, since we are going to brew our coffee, I can easily, oh, sorry, I think uh, many asking me questions. Uh, let me see, uh, as we get to continue, I'll first tell us through what people are saying here. Okay, hope, uh, oh, nice, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so as we get to comments, I know the Facebook video is kind of back uh, in, times of, in terms of seconds, but we have nothing to do about it because that's the network. It's my first time using this network. Uh, it's, yeah, it's my first time using this network. So I see that uh, the timing is kind of, mm, just give me a minute, just give me a minute. I see something wrong here, but... We can work it out for just a minute because I need my people watching me live at least to get the right content of anything that I am trying to explain. So when we look at Rajib, says nice. Thank you, Mr. Rajib. <laughs> Thank you very much. So like you see, what's talking about this node? This node has a filter. Remember, this is the node where we exert the pressure while we are filtering the coffee grounds to go at the bottom of the what? of this vessel. And when you look at this vessel still, you can easily remove this glass. Uh, it's kind of hot, but <laughs> I have nothing to do due to uh, showcasing and educational purposes, but I have to be careful. So this is a vessel where our coffee sits or is placed. And once we get to emerge, to emerge or brew that right liquor that we're looking for, after the brewing, the after brewing or during the process of brewing this coffee, we are going to see that the grounds come to the bottom. This is the knot that pushes the coffee to the bottom. And this is just a holder for safety purposes because you can't hold the glass while you are trying to do what? While you are trying to uh, serve this coffee. So this vessel is really, really very hot. That's why we need this holder, like you see it here. So I'll place it back gently for safety purposes. And like you see, the appearance of this vessel, you can easily serve it the way how it is, just in case you are in a coffee shop or in a hotel for, uh, for uh, presentation purposes, it works right for you. When you put it on the tray, 
serve it with a breakfast or lunch or dinner or as a dessert. You can easily go on with that. So let's place our note back where that, that helps us exact. So something that I didn't show you, let me just show you something very simple or slightly something that you are going to be interested in to see. So every time we get to push, like you see, this is our node. This is our filter. So let me say the coffee grounds are placed. Oh, good evening, coffee boy. <laughs> How are you? Hope you're fine. So let's say this is our, uh, this is our filter or this is our sieve, like we see it. So what happens when we're trying to separate the coffee grounds from our liquor that we are going to do it, that we are going to enjoy or that we are going to serve? This is what happens. Let me say the grounds on top. Remember, we need to sieve it and we have uh, we have a crust on top that I am going to be showing you simply. So every time we plunge or we try to push exact that uh, right pounds or that right amount, we are trying to push down, like you see, we are trying to push down the coffee so that it goes onto the bottom. And by the time you finish that, trust me, the liquor is going to be up and the coffee grounds are going to be down. So let's start with the process. Many of you are used to one process whereby you are used, whereby you are used to pushing the coffee grounds down. But I don't think sometimes uh, coffee is wide and sometimes coffee is complicated, whereby we have to try different recipes. We have to try different formulas. So with the basic, many of us are used to pushing down the uh, and try to filter the coffee grounds from the liquor. So in today's video, we are going to say something very, very different, and it's really going to surprise you. And it's really going to give you the right or the right test when it comes to the uh, coffee. So what ratio or what is the recipe that we are going to use as I, a barista with the coffee that I love when it comes to what? When it comes to brewing the French press. I'm going to use a recipe of one, to 16.666, if you round it off, it's going to be 17. And that is the basic recipe of craft brews. Some of us may choose one to 20, one to 12, uh, one to 15, one to 13, but the basic one is one to 16.66666. When you round it off, it's one point, one to 17. And once you get to calculate at the right form, using the right formula that I showed you on my YouTube channel, which is at Barista Andrea, you are going to see that it is the right thing that I talked about in this video. Okay, so uh, to the viewers, thanks for watching and make it a point to share this video. I know most of the viewers are watching uh, Uganda Cranes versus Rwanda. I've tried to search for that football match, but I really can't uh, get hold of it. And just in case you are watching this video and you are Ugandan, allow me wish you a happy Independence Day, which was Saturday the 9th of October. Happy Independence Day, just in case I didn't wish you. Allow me to pass it through this video. So let's start with our recipe first. We need hot water. Hot water is basically going to help us extract or to remove the, that liquor that we're looking for. Every time you try to use the immersion process, it's a process through which water gets to mix itself with the coffee grown so that we get the liquor that we have been looking for or that we are looking for. Even when we're cupping our coffee, this is the immersion process that we get to use. And after the brewing, we get to skim off the what? We get to skim off the, uh, the grounds uh, that are floating onto the top. Then we get to start testing. And what temperature are we looking at? Basically, when I'm brewing my coffee, okay, I think uh, someone wants to be admitted. Uh, admit the person uh, so basically when we are trying to sorry many people have been waiting to be admitted but sometimes once i start uh living the video these days i prefer just hitting it on so mr mr williams are uh, you welcome <laughs> thank you all right so basically like uh like you see i'm trying to go on with them with yeah. a heart Make a plan. So I think we have making some noise in the background. I make it that I can see it. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams, for muting. So, like I was telling you, the temperature right now, the kettle that I have doesn't measure 
temperatures. It doesn't have that screen that is going to show you the right temperatures that you need to brew your what? The right coffee with a given type of the temperature. But with my fingers, oh, like I've been showing you in the different videos, I use this first finger for 30 degrees. The second thing I will, uh, 60 degrees and the third finger, the middle finger with 90 degrees and above. So I want my coffee to be 90 degrees. And by the time I finish brewing it within the four given minutes, it has deducted, the temperatures has lowered itself to 85. That is the right perfect temperature to have a very delicious coffee when it comes to craft brews. When it comes to craft brews. So I like testing my coffees, even if it's a V60, Chemix, Europress at 85 degrees Celsius. Now with Fahrenheit height, it might be uh, 150 something or 40 something, but when it comes to Celsius, I prefer 85 degrees because it gives you, it erases the different flavors that we look for. It erases the different aromas. Even when you're testing it, it's not all that hot to burn your palate. Remember when coffee burns your palate, it's very hard for the test buds to feel something so that you can get to perceive the right tests and the flavors that we are looking for. So that's why I like it, 80 or 80 degrees, salacious. So let's get to continue. Now we are going to start brewing, but as we get to commence first, we need to also understand the coffee. What is the grind? After understanding the coffee that you're getting to use, remember when the roastery gives you the coffee, they have to give you the coffee profile. What are you going to expect every time you test that coffee? When it's oxidized, what are you going to expect? When it's not fully degassed or when it's fully degassed, what do you expect to test out of this coffee? So right now I have my, uh, <laughs> I have my one month coffee that I've been with me and every single day I like enjoying it every single day because it gives me the differences of coffee being oxidized day by day, hour by hour. So first, I'm going to adjust my grinder. When we're using the, uh, when we are trying to brew coffee with a plunger, we use the medium grind. Yeah, the medium grind. We use and we like using the medium grind. One may say it's a, 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 a breadcrumbs, like you see breadcrumbs that uh, size, kind of size, or it's related to the V60 size, but it's not going to test the same as the V60, because remember, the V60 uses the uh, gravitation, and this one uses the immersion, whereby it uses uh, mostly the gravitation, whereby coffee gets to float, and after it also sinks. But when, with this one, uh, with the plunger, the water gets to hold, or to hold within the coffee grounds to uh, quench out or to remove that liquor that we want. But with the V60, once you pour, it just goes through directly to the vessel. So here I have to adjust my grinder because I remember the last time I used it, yesterday I was taking the Kalita. I was taking, uh, you can't, okay. I was just enjoying the Kalita. So uh, good evening, hi, good evening. Uh, regards to cof uh, Coffee Boy, uh, regards to Rajid, uh, guys, I love you so much. And whoever is watching this uh, video, thanks very much for uh, being love, live. Just in case you have any question, please make it a point to also place it on the what? On the screen, I'll read out the comments and I'll give you a shout out. So like I've shown you in uh, previous videos, how to adjust this my grinder. I think with today, I won't be having the chance to show you, but I'll just adjust it. Like I've told you, I last grind a uh, Kalita. With the Kalita grind, the coffee is going to be kind of, uh, uh, it's going to be kind of fine to uh, medium, but with the Kalita, sorry, with the plunger, it's going to be medium grain. So I have to first adjust my grinder. I think I'll place this aside. Then I have to adjust. How do I adjust? I'll just uh, take this knot anti-clockwise so that my uh, so that my what my uh, my buzz get to enlarge a little bit and after I adjust I'll give it a little tie back again then we have to start seeing the kinds of grain that we are going to deal the, with so I'll first uh, get hold of the grinder and start grinding to see uh, what kind of grain it's giving me. All right, someone is calling me on my emo, which is really affecting my network. Let me pass it.
All right, and I'm so sorry for that. Uh, someone was calling me and uh, sometimes people never understand when you try to do something and uh, <laughs> they persistently do it. So I don't know whether you can see me clearly due to the network disturbance, but um, right back. I'm really sorry for the interruption. I uh, hope you can hear me clearly. So I'm going to start grinding my coffee to see. It's the kind of grind that we are trying to deal with. So remember, the more farina you make this coffee, the more stronger it is. So you have to make sure that you are having the right or the perfect grain that we try to do, that we are trying to look for. So, all right, let's get to see still. I think I'll adjust it slightly to have the perfect grain that we are looking for. How fast, I'll remove the nodes, different uh, screen nodes then. I'll text till my adjuster and clockwise. I think that's enough. I won't make it too much coarse. And it's high time we locked our what? Our pedal. Get it back. Someone really interrupted with my video. That's why many people have uh, taken off. And uh, just in case you're still watching the football match or you have any results, please put them in the comment section because I really want to see how the Ugandan match versus Rwanda has gone. So uh, let's get to see our grind. Okay, first remove this. And remove this. Just to be careful, I have to put it on my knee because I have vessels that are breakable and can easily go down. So right now I have got the right, uh, sorry, I have got the right what? I've got the right size, which is a medium size. So we are going to start making our plunger here. Like I promised you that when it comes to coffees or when it comes to anything related to coffees, however much little knowledge I have, as a barista, I'll make sure that I share it with you so that in the simplest way for every person to understand, right from the farmer to the consumer. That's why I started the channel in my local language, which is Luganda, still at Barista Andrea, but I'll change its name to Om Sogoziwe Mwani so that everyone right from the local can easily get to understand the instance as to why we started that what? As to why we started that uh, page to educate more people about farming. And recently I released a video. Yesterday I released a video on that page though. Many don't follow it, but I will make sure that I take it up. So we are going to start grinding. Remember how many grams am I going to use for this vessel? This vessel, most of us have big vessels. It depends on the size of the vessel that you have. So mine can easily hold 250 grams, roughly 350 grams, but I don't want to risk. So when it comes to 300, sorry, 300 grams or mils of water, I have to make sure that I get the 300 mils of water divided by 16.6666. Okay, that will be 18, but 18 is kind of, um, let me see, here. okay, 18 grams. So let me try using 2016, 2016. No, let me use 18 grams so that I don't make any mistakes with my vessel. But still, I can give it a try. Let me first boil my water again. Then let me place it at 20. I believe 20 will be enough. So 20 grams times 16.666. So that is basically going to be 333 grams or mils of water that I'm going to add in 20 mils. So it's high time we started grinding. I'll grind from down. Someone is giving me a call, so I have to shut that down. Then we commence, All right? Okay. 
go, let's go. We are looking for 18 grams. So sometimes while you're using this grinder, just in case you are new to my videos, you have to have enough energy or you have to first eat enough food so that you can easily get to enjoy the grind of what? Of this, of this uh, uh, grinder. So what we are going to do, I'll put this vessel aside. We first remove this uh, node that helps us to press or press the coffee down to the bottom then. I'll remove this water from our what? I'll remove this water from our what? Our vessel. Then what are we going to do? I'll place the plunger on top of the weighing scale. Many are going to tell me, why don't you show us exactly what happens when we try to brew our coffee? So if you allow me, this is what I'm going to do. I'll remove this vessel to give you a clear picture of what really happens. I know the camera might be very far, but this is the vessel that we use. So I'll place my vessel. Turn on the weighing scale. Remember it has the timing and it has the what? It has the timing and it has the grammage. So we are going to put 20 grams, 20 grams of, uh, 20 grams of what? 20 grams of coffee with 333 mils of water. So I'll first give it a pour, the first pour, cause my, uh, my dosing chamber, this is the dosing chamber, can't really hold 13 grams or 20 grams at one time. So it can give me easily six six grams every moment so every time you grain make sure you remove the coffee that passes through the uh that passes over the what the coffee hooper like i've told you so we are we have 7.5 seven, uh, so we're looking for 12 point uh 12.5 grams of coffee so i'll grind like i told you i can't easily grind here because it's kind of going to be uh shaky and it might uh lead a problem to our what? It might cause a problem to our, our vessels. All right, so we are going to pay to grind our coffee. These are very ancient, extraordinary ways on how you can easily make coffee because trust me, uh, sometimes truth is I prefer drinking this than uh, the immersion or the drip coffee or the power over process more than this pressure cause I believe that this this gives me the right test of coffee but even this pressure trust me it has those different uh special characters when you test it has the crema it has everything so that when you get to drink you feel like yes one that, but that only happens once the calibration has been made by a professional barista or even if it's a junior barista but you have made the right calibration trust me you are going to really enjoy that coffee that i am trying to talk about so as we continue, many are asking me, why don't you bring the camera closer so that we can get to see what really happens when you are when you are trying to brew that coffee. Okay, so I'm going to bring the camera closer, but let me first finish grinding off our coffee. I have uh, 17 grams, 0.5 so far. So we are looking for two grams of coffee. Yeah, we are uh, so far looking for uh, 1.8 grams of coffee. So let's go ahead to grind our coffee. We shall not stop until we succeed with what we are looking for. All right, so after grinding this coffee. Okay, so we are almost there. I am looking for two grams, okay. So perfect, that is 20 grams. So uh, just a minute. So with the 10 grams, allow me to adjust my camera so that we get to see what really happens. Let me bring the camera closer so that you get to witness what really happens. So I'll give it a shake to give it a standard layoff and a standard layoff and let's see what happens. Well, okay, I think uh, this is good. I'm trying to bring it closer so that we can easily see what 
really happy to add a new hydro group. I think uh, that's good. Yeah, that's enough over there. So when we try to brew, this is what happens. I have decided to use a camera closer. So we have a close mess in what really goes on while we try to brew our coffee. So after putting the plants of the coffee within our what? Within our plunger vessel. It's supposed to sit in this, but the purpose of I putting this vessel separate from the holder is to give you the right picture or the correct picture of what really goes on. So I'll first put this aside so that I can easily, all right, I'll just give it a play. So remember, I am going to tell off to remove the 20 grams and we are going to start the right pour. So many of us have different formulas on when, how we pour our coffee and how we brew or extract. We have different formulas or recipes. Remember, whatever you do to that coffee while you're pouring water or how many times you pour water or what, or whether you steer into your coffee, that is a very special recipe that is going to cause different characters when it comes to what? When it comes to brewing your coffee. So some of us have a tendency or have a system of first pouring, let me say uh, pour 20 grams. We are going to first pour uh, 40 grams of water as we start the timing and we give it the blooming timing or the blooming uh, allowance seconds to degas that coffee. So, and others have, we have a tendency of just pouring at once. We pour at once, get a spoon and stir. They're all right recipes, but what is the character of your coffee that gets to define the right recipe that you are trying to use? So me, I'm going to first pour 40 grams of water or 40 mils of water. I give it 40 seconds to, sorry, I'll give it 30 seconds. Yes, I'll give it 30 seconds to bloom or degas. Then I'll pour constantly, slowly and slightly. Remember, the gentle you pour, the right liquor you're going to brew or the right liquor you are going to extract out of that coffee. So I'll begin my pour up to 40. No, this is not the perfect kettle to use, but we have nothing to do. So I'll start my timing and start the pour. But you pour while you round. Yeah, slightly, that is 30. So we are going to allow the water concentrate. I don't know. Let me try to remove this. So you don't see, people can see closely what is happening. So I'm going to give it 40 seconds. Like it's counting so far, it is 20 seconds. Yeah, I think that is clear. So right now it's 20, but the water is accessing all the coffee packs, all the coffee closures, and it's getting to bloom all the gases. So right now it's 30 seconds already. Now we are going to pour constantly, slightly, gently up to 333 grams. So we go gently, slightly, and slowly. That's 100. Slowly, slightly. This is not the right rush, the kettle. Most of us have uh, brewers that we use, but yeah, we don't have any problem. So it's almost 300. Let's spread that. It gives us the right measurement that we looked for. Okay, we're looking for 33. Wow, perfect. I gave it the right <laughs> measurement. I gave it the right measurement. So I am going to bring back the light. So as we see the sofa, it's within one minute and a half of brewing. Remember, once you start pouring, you start the timing. So it's going to give you the right exact. When it reaches four to five seconds, I'm going to brew it for five, uh, sorry, five minutes, four to five minutes. I'm going to easily brew it for five minutes to give me or to allow the brewing uh, process. So I'll first give it a start, like we mostly do. I think that's enough. So I'll give it a start at least to release of the coffee packs that have been settled in ground and they did have the right amount of water. So every creamer that we see on coffee, it shows the, uh, the perfection within the coffee. It shows the delicacy within the coffee. It shows what you are going to taste. It shows the freshness of the coffee. That's why when I'm trying to brew any craft brew, I like using fresh coffee. However much I've long lasted with this coffee, but still shows the freshness characters of this coffee, which is lovely. So after that, I'll get my 
node here and give it a cover. All right. So that we don't allow too much escape of the what? Too much escape of the heat from our coffee. Because once we leave it open, it's the, the, the heat is really going to run out very fast of the plunger. So like you see, we are brewing. And the brewing is going to take five minutes until it loses off at least some degrees of the what? Because even drinking hot, uh, hot coffee, uh, it really kills off different characters or it kills off different things. So like you see, our coffee has the right creamer. It's really clean. It has even the aroma that it presents to your nostrils while you are breathing or while you are inhaling. It's really right and perfect for the test that we are looking for. So we give it time. But once we, <laughs> once we have a closer look, after the creamer, we have some coffee grounds that have not yet concentrated on the bottom. But we closely see different coffee grounds that I don't know whether we can have them because I look at this. Let me try to adjust uh, my lighting here. So if we have a closer look at this, we see some coffee grounds settling at the bottom, like we see there, scrolling onto the bottom. So basically, the uh, the the the, uh, the, uh, the creamer and the coffee grounds on top are going to be skimmed off. I'm going to skim off this coffee grounds on top so that I get to enjoy the right liquor that I have been looking for. So once you skim off, this is a method used while we are still cupping our coffee or while we are cupping our coffee to have that right perfect test. So after that, I'll remove uh, the press node. Then I'm going to skim off. I'm going to skim it off. And after, we are going to enjoy that perfect cup. So we give me the right time, but just in case you have any questions so far, I see, or uh, let me see, I see a few questions rising, but let's first finish off this, then we get to commence with our video. So like we see, most of the coffee grounds are still settling. So right now it's five minutes and we stop the time. So when we stop the time, when we stop the time, what is next? I'll hold off a pressing node off here. Like you see, it escapes with some of the creamer. Let's sit on the vessel here. And I am going to get our spoon to skim off or to remove this liquor. I think our, uh, our wing scale right now it's of no purpose because I'm done timing and huh? I'm done with getting the right grammage. So what we're going to do, I am going to skim off these grounds that are still on top, okay, and the creamer. So after skimming it off, not everything is going to go underneath or, or everything is going to go with the spoon. I'll get my vessel, put back the, uh, the pressing knot and slightly push, slightly push the grounds back. So when we look closely up, we don't have any grounds back. A little bit of creamer is passing through. So once I bring it back, I'm going to slightly push. It's not allowed to bring back, but it's uh, for education purposes. I am going to slightly push these coffee grounds. This is what most of the baristas do. We slightly push the coffee grounds to the bottom so that we separate the grounds from the liquor, the coffee liquor that we are looking for. So when it goes down up to the bottom, then we get to serve this coffee. So after pressing it up to the bottom and the sieve gets to hold the coffee grounds like we see, then we are going to start enjoying or serve our coffee. So when we see the sieve, has some cream on it, then we see the coffee grounds still at the bottom and we have some cream on top and, and the what? And the liquor is separated like which because this is the immersion process. Like I told you, that's why most of us, this is the most simplest way every person can make at home. Even if you are going to work, you can leave this brewing, go take your shower and come back when it has finalized with 
it's brew. So I think right now we've seen the right process. Most of us push this sieve up to the middle. Oh, most of us don't push the sieve. We just place it and slightly push it so that it can only sieve. It's like when you boil water with uh, with uh, tea leaves or the black tea. You boil water and you pour the tea inside. You just get a sieve and pour off. So that's what most of the baristas or that's what most of the professions do. But right now, since I can't hold it like this, it's very, very, very hot for my hands to hold. Ow. Ow. I think I need something to get hold, to hold it up. Let me see if I have, I have my cloth right here. So I'm going to hold it slightly. Remember you have to also use a clean cloth, not, uh, not every cloth has to do that cause uh, when you use any cloth, it has external factors that are really going to affect your coffee. So gently and slightly place it back. You don't have to remove it while you are trying to brew it, but this is just for educational purposes to show you what exactly happens while you are trying to do it, while you are trying to brew. So I'll push it back until it settles on the best. So I think right now it has settled on the best. So the serving, how do you serve this coffee? You get to hold this, like you see, it's unique. It's really, I think in most of the equipments that you can serve to your consumer or to your customer, this is one of the equipments that you can use as a barista because it's really nice and presentable. When you look at this, when you look at this, it's just perfect for everything. Like you see, so since, uh, so we are going to start pouring our coffee. Like you see, that is the flow that we are looking for. I'll give, I'll give it a sniff first. Trust me. And this is one of the coffees that you would like to take in the morning, afternoon, evening, even before bed. Because remember, me, when I don't take coffee in one of those times, even before bed, I don't rest. I don't have a restful mind. I start thinking about coffee and I always ask my questions about why I have not drunk any cup of coffee. So I think I'll slightly place my camera for a clear view of me. Oops, I think that is kind of, I think that is kind of up. We need to adjust it again slightly. I think that's enough. Yeah, so after brewing, I'm going to test. But first, before you test any barista or any consumer, before you test your coffee, this is the right thing to do. First, sniff. Get the aromas, get the beauty of the coffee through the nostrils. Remember when the nostrils get the beauty of the coffee, they send a message to the brain. What are you going to consume? What are your taste buds going to feel? What are they going to navigate with the beverage that you are drinking or even the food that you are drinking? Remember, this is one of the strongest sense every human has. We have five senses and those are the most crucial senses that we try to follow in the hotel industry. In one of the videos that I talked about, I talked about these five senses. And just in case you didn't get them, I'll repeat another video to tell you why we need these senses. So this is it. Sending the message to the brain, it tells me the flavors that I'm going to acquire right from testing. Some flavors you get, you might get them from the aroma, but you won't feel them on your test buds. Then after sending the message to the brain, then use your palate still to send the message to the brain. Then the mouth will speak out for itself what you're going to enjoy. So first, when we're looking at this craft brews, what I've not been talking about, when we look at this craft brews, every time we test any kind of coffee, what are those factors that we are looking for? We are looking for the body, the taste, the aroma stroke, fragrancy. And so after looking for these three things, many things might be under categorized by the cup testers, but we as the baristas, we have to know at least those basics. When we look at the test, test, what does it give us? It gives us the sweetness, the bitterness, the acidity, the the aftertaste. What are the levels of the sweetness? What are the levels of the uh, uh, bitterness? What are the levels of 
after test? Is it long lasting or is it a wet finish? What is the level of the acidity? Is it high? Is it low? Is it medium? So when we look at the flavors, those are the flavors. Sometimes to get or to attain the knowledge of the flavors that you are looking for, sometimes you have to have a past experience of eating or drinking that flavor. It's really going to be hard for you as a barista to just navigate a flavor that you haven't tested yet before. Then when it comes to the, I will say we look at the body, the test and the flavors. When it comes to the body, how pleasant is the body? Is it a heavy body? Is it a medium body? Is it a light body? What feel does it give to you when you test the body? Remember even the body contributes to the, uh, it contributes to the presence of the different flavors that we get to attain. Sometimes you may feel the heavy body and you get to feel uh, uh, vanilla yogurt, you get to feel the mango, most of the heavy bodied flavors or the heavy bodied drinks. When it's light, you get to feel the different light drinks that you've been drinking or the different light fruits that you've been eating, neither to the light tests. So sometimes you're going to find complex, to complex flavors, complex different characters within this coffee, and sometimes you can easily get to stint out the different flavors or at most of those that you try testing. So I think uh, I see, I see, I see, I see today. I think uh, many people are still watching the uh, Uganda versus, uh, <laughs> yes, Uganda versus the, uh, Uganda versus the London much, but uh, yeah, like I've always told you, my role here is to simplify anything when it comes to the coffee industry. And just in case you don't understand anything, or something is really confusing you when it comes to the coffee industry or the coffee section, please feel free to reach me out on my Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and I think YouTube in the comment section. And that is at Barista Andrea. Remember to subscribe, follow on those channels, neither the pages, because you are going to learn a lot. Like I've told you, I'm starting a page which I uploaded or I live went. It's going to be a live video page. We shall be bringing different baristas right from my country who are really going to share the experience in their local language to get the, uh, to, to, to get to please or to get to attract many people to attain the interest as to why we should enjoy coffee, as to why you should become a barista, as to why you should farm coffee. And thanks a lot to the UCDA, that is the Uganda Coffee Development Association. It really did a nice job representing our coffee in the Dubai Expo. So I will just extend that. I will just extend that applause to the UCDA. And thanks a lot to the schools within my country. Uh, the schools, the barista schools that are really pushing forward, they are really sharing and pushing forward the love of coffee within the youth so that we are getting to attain jobs. And however much we are getting to attain jobs from the coffee industry or within the coffee industry, still it's giving us the knowledge of what the agency of our backgrounds used to enjoy. So without wasting any time, I think allow me to say goodbye. Thanks to everyone who has been watching this video. And I think that's the end of it now. So I prefer Uganda Cranes versus Rwanda, and I believe Uganda Cranes has one. See you there.